eyes front and center. Hey, this is Doug for the Full Earth Workshop. We are ready to watch Dragula rise from the slab. This is episode 7 where we are coffin tossing. We are trying to get Grandpa up out of the monster's lair and up top where we can do a little bit of racing. Dragula is a Hollywood car that was produced in the 60s by George Barris, the famous customizer. This car was introduced during the episode of the Munsters called Hot Rod Herman, where the coach had been lost and Grandpa Munster created this coffin car to win the Munsters Manor car back. Since the last episode, done a little bit of work here, did a little bit of radiusing to the corners of the coffin, and now we're getting ready to drop in the engine. Remember, we did this several episodes ago, and now we're going to put that engine into place, and we're going to cover up the top of this coffin with a nice arched top. And the way we're going to do that is kind of interesting. We're not going to put it together like an old airplane wing with spars to keep that shape. We're going to do a lamination technique. I kind of learned when I was working on the mercury capsule that's in another episode here on the Full Earth Workshop. And at this point, it's going to be very important to do a little template to make sure that the two parts that I laminate together are going to fit as one. And you won't even be able to tell what we did. It's a little bit of visual trickery here. The nice thing about making these templates is you can just do a fold similar to what you see in there. You press your thumb against a corner, make a really nice little groove in the paper that's easy to see. Then you can cut out your template and go about your business. Yes, you can take the little center out of the styrene. It's pretty simple to do. You just score it, exercise the corners a little bit, it'll pop right out. Now, one cool thing about doing this lamination process is it's also a very lightweight way to do things. And it produces a final surface that is actually a little bit stronger than something of a similar thickness. This is one of those templates that you just have to do by trial and error because we're going to do some little bevels on both sides, the top and the bottom of the coffin and well, we'll see if they're correct. Luckily, when I create this, they are. See, I'm just scribing what I think it's going to look like, and uh, luckily, we were right. One thing I really enjoy about scratch building that you don't really get with buying a produced model kit is you're making individual decisions, and if you're making good ones as you go, sooner or later, you look at this thing and go, wow, this is a pretty cool little system we've created here. Or, or you go, oh gosh, I'll start over. Uh, for the most part, if you really think this thing through, you get a real sense of pride when this thing comes together. A little bit later on in today's segment, you will take a look at the underside of this slot car that's been totally built from scratch, and you go, wow, it's rather complex. I didn't think it totally through beforehand. It's just these little decisions one at a time that build into something that is greater than the sum of its parts. I think I just figured it out. When I scratch build, it makes me look like I'm smarter than I really am. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? A few moments ago, you just saw I'm using half millimeter styrene. And that's very important here because you don't want to use something too thick or too thin. Too thin, you're going to get some little wobbles in the surface, which you don't want. Too thick, it's not going to be able to make the curves that you really want it to. So this half millimeter seems to be just perfect for this. It can still hold the shape that I want. And if you notice here, I'm just using a line of cyanoacrylate. You stick it into place and it holds the shape that you want, which is really nice. Then, as you're going to see in a minute here, you go back with an X-Acto blade and you trim off that raggedy edge. And it's really kind of cool. This is where the kicker comes in really handy because you want that stuff to set up right away. You know, I wonder what's in that kicker. I've heard that one of the active ingredients that makes this cyanoacrylate set up is, is water. Wouldn't it be amazing we're spending all this money on this kicker stuff and it's just water in there? I don't know. It might be something different. Probably is. Now, as I start doing this lamination process, you'll notice I've switched glues one more time. I've gone back to the Tamiya cement, which is actually just a chemical that melts the styrene. And one thing when you're laminating, you want the two parts to melt into each other. And you see it, it does it really, really well here. 
literally you just smooth it out with your fingers and tape it down for a little bit and it becomes like one part of plastic look at the beautiful arch that carries on through the whole coffin now and that's just because we're laminating once we're done you'll be able to tap on this and it feels like the same thickness that we've been using everywhere else this is a really slick technique that i'd kind of discovered it just out of necessity i was working on an astronaut couch and i just couldn't get the correct shape or buy anything in advance that was the right diameter so i had to make my own and it's so easy to do now when you're working in styrene it is very important to always use the the, the proper thickness that's one of the real tricks to using this stuff. Sometimes thin works great, sometimes thick works great. You have to think about the, the strength of the part versus how easy it is to bend. And that's one thing I'm just kind of working through in this model as I go. Now, one other nice thing that we're gonna find out about using this thin stuff up on the top in the arched area is I can also get a really nice lip for the windshield section. And if you remember correctly, that's the only original part to an old AMT Dragula kit from the 60s. And I was able to find this thing on eBay and purchased it just because it's kind of a, a funky little part to develop. It just made things a lot easier. But I'm gonna make a little sill. Now, if you notice, it's not gonna fit flush on here because of that curve. So we're gonna go in and cut a sill around the outside that will allow this thing to set in really nicely. And of course, I never would have gotten into this solution unless I just fiddled around with it. Another really nice thing about this laminate surface, because I only used half millimeter styrene, it's gonna be a lot easier to cut out this little center part. Now I've said before, sometimes it is really great to keep the parts that you cut away because you can use them for templates for some of your next processes. You can see we do that here. I use that little round section I cut out and just use it as a little drawing tool. We cut out that section, we're gonna have to sand, but look, look, this little part now, the canopy fits on very nicely and flat. In the last episode I mentioned briefly, I didn't know how much room there would be for a driver. In this case, we're gonna put grandpa in the driver's seat. Luckily, there's gonna be a little bit of room and we can make a nice little driver in there that will look very three-dimensional. Take a brief moment here and look underneath. There's a lot of complexity to the way this chassis fits into the body. And this again, we just discovered this piece by piece. We worked it through each little problem once it's solved, you start getting a really nice complex system here that works well. Now, let's go back to the driver situation. We could buy the AMT model for the Grandpa Munster character that's in it, but uh, I don't think it makes sense. It's a rather expensive kit and truthfully not a very good one. I think what I'm going to do is use Sculpey Polymer Clay. This is a really nice sculpting clay that's used a lot in Hollywood for making maquettes and doing small sculptures. And one cool thing about it, you can put it in the oven at about 200 degrees or something, leave it for several minutes, it comes out and it has hardened. It becomes a very nice plastic that you can sand on and paint and so forth. So we're gonna to try to put together a little grandpa figure that fits perfectly into this space and doesn't give any clues to not having any room below the canopy. I really like the way it's looking with the brass chassis sticking out a little bit in front, which is very much like George Barris's original concept sketch. He wasn't able to take that to fruition, but we will. I want to give a shout out now to all of our great modeling friends in Italy who are watching. We appreciate having you here. Time to hop on the shop. Time to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on the Full Earth Workshop.